Hey, it's Mike, the Everyday Bow Hunter, and um, here are the next couple of videos we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how to read topographic map, how to how to use it to plan your hunts, and and how to put it all together and actually use some of these hunting apps to to e scout and do the you know do a little bit of advanced scouting so you're not wasting your time on the ground in spots where you're not going to find any deer or whatever you're hunting. So um, just a little background first off. Um, I've spent a lot of time in topographic maps over the years. I was 21 years in the Army. I have an extensive, extensive experience uh, using maps for everything from operations here in the United States to other countries. So with that in mind, uh, I know a little bit about topographic maps and I know, you know some of the information out there that you get can, can really you know, be off of what you know you really need to know and there's some critical things you need to know before you start looking at maps and assuming um, you know what's going on so hopefully this video here is going to take you down a road where you understand how to read a map effectively and it's going to help you uh, in the future with your e-scouting and and being a better hunter so let's dive into it Okay, first off, we're going to talk a little bit about your basic topographic map. Before we get into, you know, apps and all the other little things, we're going to look at a regular U.S. Geological Survey map, 1 over 62,500 uh, map, and kind of look at a couple things you need to, to see when you're when you look at these maps. Now, you, a lot of times, like if you're using Google, uh, Google Maps or you're using Google Earth, this information is available. Um, but if you're using an app, a lot of times, unless um, you dig into the layers that, that are being provided in the apps, you don't get this information. So sometimes it's unknown and it can be very hard to decipher um, little things when looking at a map. You know, things might be just a little bit off from what you think they are and you can't figure out why. So a couple, we're going to go over a couple quick things that you need to look at if you are pulling out a regular physical printed topograph, topographical map. and. Uh, to start off with this, as I scroll down the map here, we're gonna see at the bottom we have um, you know, the legend and really gonna tell us a lot about how to look at the scale of the map. And, and the information is provided here is gonna help us determine a lot about our elevation, about the scope and slope of our, of our elevation. And it's gonna really give you a good lay of the land. Now, as you can see here on the map, most, most maps come and, uh, and have a grid, um, like a military map is you know, uh, based on a thousand meter uh, squares in it. This one's a little bit different. If you go down in here, we can zoom in and you can see that the scale basically takes us um, in, we have uh, miles, we have feet and we have kilometers. So when we're looking at most maps, as opposed to, to what we expect in the, in the US, everybody's used to using yards and feet and inches and stuff like that. And that's, that's what we're used to. But most maps um, use the inter international standards and that's why they're always gonna use meters or kilometers. So you're gonna have that, uh, that metric system in there, but they are gonna do uh, your contour lines, which we'll get into in a second, contour lines all in, in feet. So that's something you can look at. So as you're gonna see here on here as well, um, you have your contour interval is in feet and the, uh, the datum it says is uh, mean sea level, which means that the elevations we're going to talk about on the map itself are based on sea level. So if it's, you know, 1500 feet, it means it's 1500 feet above sea level. So that's, uh, that's something to take in consideration. Another thing here is we have what's called a declination diagram. And this, this diagram right here, um, it basically says uh, we have five degrees um, from true north to magnetic north. So that means that if you're navigating and you pull your compass out and you follow north thinking, you know, you're looking at your map, looking at your app, and it's, it's telling you um, to follow north. Well, north might be five degrees that way. So you have to always understand if you're using a compass to set the declination. You're gonna say, oh, I, I have to go 
um, 270 degrees when really what you have to be going is 265 degrees uh, in navigating with your with your compass but that's something we're going to get in and to down the line in other videos right now it's just kind of showing you um, what to expect on these on these topographical maps so as we said with the scale here you can take this scale and place it take the scale and place it on the map and you're gonna that's the distances as they're represented represented on your map and um, be cognizant that if you're using um, an app you know, like Onyx, Huntwise, Spartan Forge, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that most of these apps will show you distance in yards. So that's going to be a significant difference to what you're you're used to to seeing between a regular topographic map and an app. So be be aware of the difference between meters and and yards. When we when we look at a map here, the biggest thing is you see all the different lines on a map and and that's really outlying the topography and that's why it's called a topographic map it basically shows you the lay of the land you can see everything as it's laid out from hills to valleys etc you're gonna you can see how the the land flows based on the contour lines that are shown and that's what these lines are on on the map they are called uh, contour lines each one of these lines on this map represents a specific elevation. Each one represents an elevation above, above sea level, and that's as, as you get to the, the contour line to the left or right of them, or, or uh, up or down from them, you're then gonna see um, a rise or a drop in elevation. So you have to really dig into these, and, and that'll help you also determine the type of terrain features that you're looking at. So to dig into this a little bit more, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of uh, look at a uh, at the uh, Onyx app, and this is going to allow us to to clean things up, get all the clutter out of the out of the, the map, and we're going to look at um, contour lines, how to read contour lines, and how to understand how the elevation changes in contour lines dictate um, whether we're going uphill or downhill, and the different kinds of terrain features that they create create when we're looking at them. All right, as we, as we kind of uh, zoom in here, what we'll be able to do here is um, take a look at our, our elevation and determine uh, our elevation based on, on our contour line. So each one of these lines is considered a contour line. Um, and each one is marked, that's marked with an elevation is called our index lines. Uh, the, uh, the index lines basically give us a uh, elevation in, in a round number, you know, and here you have 800, you have 900 feet in elevation. So that's generally how it works. It goes by the hundreds. Each scale, as we looked at the, the map on the, on the the topographic map legend, we saw that the, the scale was the contour line interval was 20 feet. So as you can see here, where you have 800 feet and 900 feet, as you go up each one of these lines, um, when you have a higher elevation contour line above another, you can automatically assume that you're going up in elevation from that contour line and you're going down in elevation away from it. So from the, the, the uh, hilltop here, which, which we have here at 900 feet, as that scales down and goes down, um, you can see that one, two, three, four, and then five, it's 20 feet be between each one is 100 feet. So between 900 and 800, you have that 20 foot contour line interval between each one. So that gives you your, your basic uh, intervals between each. The lines in between here, as we said, are called your intermediate contour lines. Now, when you have, see like a, which we don't have on the map here, if you see like a dotted uh, line that's, as, that's represented as a contour line in between, that dotted line is a, uh, a supplementary contour line. And what that basically means is you have a generally flat area with a mild uh, change in elevation. In fact, it could be, it could be 10, 10 feet in elevation. It could go off that that track of the 20 foot interval in between each line. So you do see below this 800 foot level here, you're gonna see it goes down into low ground here and there's actually some bodies of water represented on the map. And um, you can see how the area around there is a wide band of area there that there's no 
uh, not no contour lines. So that means that that elevation is the same for that entire area and is probably and generally either a very gradual slope or no slope at all. It could be very flat. As you see this area that goes upwards from here, um, you have an entire area here that's probably fairly flat and not, um, you know, or very gently sloping ground that uh, is almost not discernible that there's a lot of slope to it. So that's what you, when you have them, your contour lines are farther apart. That means you have less less changes in elevation and when you have them closer together that's when you have more drastic changes in elevation so when your your contour lines are very close together that's where you have your your cliffs your drop-offs like your know, steep ravines and things like that so but understand also when you're looking at a map that the level of zoom that you're looking at on that map makes a difference so you always have to say to yourself okay this is a 20 foot change in elevation between these contour lines as I'm looking at them and every map you look at you don't have to see that map's legend to understand what that what that contour interval is all you have to do is look at, at an interval at a uh, at an index line like we have here with the 900 uh, foot index line around the hilltop and you see where it goes down and as you get five uh, supplement or I'm sorry intermediate uh, contour lines down and you're hitting that next next uh, index line at 800 foot so with that in mind you know that's a eight, that's a hundred foot change in elevation so each one of those is obviously 20 feet in between so when you look at a map look at that right away and see what your interval is so you understand no matter how zoomed in on it you are or how far out you are zoomed on it that uh, that that's where you are as far as elevation is concerned because it can be really deceiving if you're really really closed in on something and you're uh, you know you're zoomed in like this and things look really far apart or as you get where it's like this and it looks like as I I now have a, a basically a cliff over here because these contour lines are so close together and it could be fairly steep ground but uh, it might not be as steep as you think it is because as soon as you zoom in it now doesn't appear to be quite as steep as you thought it was once you get on the ground and you and you get a feel for that for that land you'll you'll understand how steep uh 20 foot is so it's really hard to, to look at a map and to say hey i know what 20 foot is you know um but until you actually get on the ground and, and get a feel for that then you can understand how, how drastic it is and how or how much of a gradual slope it is you know when you're looking at your map and get a, a good feel for for the ground that you're on so next let's talk about terrain features so there's a lot of slang terms out there for terrain features a lot of different um a lot of different uh words used for different things different part of the country everybody has their terms for everything whether it's a a, a creek or a creek you know uh you know a uh a ridge line you know people call you know things different things points and spurs and, and draws and ditches and things like this so we're going to uh, kind of go into how you uh, look at look at a topographic map and say okay this is this is what I'm looking at on the ground and that's what I can can expect to see so first off pretty easy if you see here we have two hilltops we have a hilltop that's not quite round and a hilltop does not have to be a perfect point you know where it's perfectly round or anything like that it's just where contour lines come together in a circle and it's either you got extremely low ground or extremely high ground and that's where you have to look at those contour lines and see that those index lines and see what the elevation is um, but here we have a, a, a pretty um, normal hilltop with a circle circle here and you can see um, the the ridge lines go down uh, below it so that's your that's your first of your five major terrain features so hilltop is your, your biggest one you have two right here and then you have uh, the next major terrain feature um, major terrain feature we have is a saddle and so here we have a saddle is ground between uh, two two hilltops basically so you have two hilltops on either side and that ground in between 
is that is a saddle so that area in between is a saddle and that that'll be low ground in between the hilltops so here on this this map here we have an area low ground here and that area in there would be kind of a major saddle um, and then you have over here which is a very small amount of elevation change that would be a very small saddle almost uh, not not uh, easy to see with the eye so you have have to look at when you're talking about a saddle talking about an area that really has a drastic change in elevation um, and it doesn't have to but it um, in order to uh, to be seen um, with the human eye and see that that you know those areas between the knuckles as we say that those dips between your knuckles that saddle area that's what you're going to see on the map and a lot of times you know uh, especially during the rut deer like to use saddles run through i think saddles are probably one of uh, the most saturated hunting spots on, on the face of the planet here when you're going out and you're you're hunting a lot of people set up in, in saddles because of the the strategic uh advantage and because deer love them uh so much but um so that's what a saddle is the next thing we have is a valley and of course a valley is basically low ground in between uh two two ridge lines um and your ridge lines as well your your ridges um can be you know, an area like this where you have a continual run of, of high ground, and you would consider this entire area here a, a single ridge, as opposed to just these ridge lines here running around it. Those are the ridge lines, but this entire area down through here because of this high ground here is the ridge. So a ridge basically is, is, your, is a series of high ground, whereas your valley is, um, like this would be this area here a lot of times a valley has a stream or something going through it this isn't really a great example of a valley so let's take a look and see if we have a better example okay here is an even better look of uh you can see you have ridge lines running down here where they're really dark here and that's that those hilltops or that high ground that runs and in between here uh we have have our low ground with a you know a stream or a creek or whatever running through it and then we have uh, high ground on the other side of that as well with a, another ridge line running down in fact there's mult as you can see here on the screen there's multiple ridge lines running here uh, across the screen up and down where it's a little bit darker so those are all ridge lines running down and you can see the the differences in elevation etc so the last major terrain feature we have is called a depression. A depression is usually depicted with a, by a circle and it'll have dashes uh, inside of it. Um, if you go to, uh, go to uh, the link in the description below, it shows you uh, have examples of each one of these terrain features you can dig into even more on archeryhunting.com. Uh, go into detail on each one of these things I'm talking about so you can you can take your time with it and read through it and see uh, individual pictures of each terrain feature with a little bit more uh, detail it's going to help you really uh, learn how to identify the terrain features and then um, use it when you're when you're uh, navigating or getting ready to, to go out and, and do some scouting the next thing we have though is our three minor terrain features we talked about the five major terrain features now we're going to talk about our uh, the basic uh, minor terrain features three of them so and there's a lot of uh, <laughs> there's a lot of debate over what each one of these is called but um, understand this is the, the the military terms that I'm used to for for basic navigation so um, the first first minor terrain feature we have is a draw so where we have these ridges running down through here we do have other terrain features to navigate by that are gonna allow us to basically see a change in the lay of the land. Right here, you have a pretty drastic draw. And how do we know that this is a draw? A draw is a decrease in elevation on, on uh, you know, one side, but usually high ground on either side. It's basically, um, you know, we're taking what we saw in a valley and making it much smaller in scale. So this, you know, a lot of people call a draw, if it's, if it's uh, you know, relatively steep, I'll call it, a ditch if there's water running down in it they'll call it a drainage um, but the the proper term is that it's a it's a draw and you can see here where we have our higher ground here and our contour lines go down in elevation but what we have is is an area carved out here where that's cut into basically a v into your high ground 
and it doesn't necessarily have to be a V, but it can be a, a cut into the landscape where, where that, that uh, terrain changes, changes shape, and it allows for low ground to be cut in to our higher ground. And that area cut in there is going to be our draw. And then we have our next minor terrain feature, which is our spur or point. And the spur will basically be pushing off of, of this, um, usually off of a draw. You can see here we have very minor spurs here, very minor ones here. But in different areas, you can see where there's another draw here. And that draw um, lends itself to anything that's pointing down the mountain. We see like area like this. Um, if that's pointing, pointing down the mountain, there, that's usually high ground surrounded on both sides by low ground. And, and your draw is low ground surrounded on both sides by high ground. So that's, that's basically what, what your, your difference between your draw and your, and your points are. So some points can be uh, drastic. Other ones can be very, very subtle. So here we have um, you know, an area here that's, that's pointing out, that's, that's coming from an, an uphill and going downhill. And that area that points out would be just what I'm saying, just a point or a spur. And a lot of times people think of a spur as something a little bit more, more drastic. You know, we have our low ground here, and then we have, you know, our, our sharper uh, areas here that people can be considered, you know, a spur pushing out. A lot of times people associate, even though it's low ground here, people associate a spur with a sharper area like that or a point like that. But a, a spur can be anything where that where that V goes out or a round area goes out that's that's breaking from the normal normal terrain or normal ridge line or hilltop or whatever. And and that's what what that is then. So and then of course the last ter, uh, minor terrain feature, which is fairly major when you think about it, is a cliff. And now a cliff, much like a depression on a, a topographic map, a lot of times will have a contour line and then it'll have dashes on it facing downhill. And that depicts a very, very, very steep, just straight drop off area of a cliff. But as you can see here with this ridge line, the, t the, the contour lines are very close together. And when the contour lines are very close together, that's still considered to be very steep and can even be a, a cliff type uh, situation that's not depicted on the map as a cliff. So understand that when your contour lines are very tight together, that, that creates a very, very steep environment that can be almost cliff-like in nature. So pay attention to that. Those contour lines are close together. But also remember, as I said, as you, as you zoom in, there can be um, a real change in how you perceive this to be. Whereas this area here from maybe here, this hilltop right here down to here um, would be considered a very steep area. And the area down here um, spreads out enough that down the hill that you might have areas that could be considered a bench on a ridge line because it's, it's fairly flat and you can walk along it pretty easily running this ridge line. So um, this whole, whole uh, ridge area here um, encompasses all this, this ground here and goes down until it terminates in the valley. So that's where your ridges on both sides can take up a lot of ground um, and you can be running ridge lines um, and going to different elevations, but the whole complex is a ridge. So that's why it's such a big, big terrain feature when you're, when you're navigating. So understand that. And of course, on topographic maps, then um, the other thing that we have to take in consideration are colors. So when we're looking at a topographic map uh, where we have a lot of our greens or browns, uh, a lot of browns can depict things like deserts or, or, or really uh, rocky type terrain. And your green basically really talks about thick vegetation. It doesn't have to be forested lands. Some maps depict forested lands as really, really dense, thick, hard green. And then your uh, just thick vegetation can be a lighter green. But the areas that are, are white 
Um, probably still have vegetation, could be farmland or anything like that, but it's generally considered to be open open area that's not forested. There might be some trees in there, but they're not tight enough together to, to really take up a lot of space. So that's where your, um, that's where your um, colors on your map make a difference. Of course, your blues are your, are your uh, water. And then if you have, uh, have streams and stuff, we're just looking at, so we have um, one here, we have a really defined um, stream here that's seen um, right there. But what we looked at before was areas that had water in. So this area here, this water coming down out of this draw right here um, would be considered to be fairly, uh, fairly uh, regular but intermittent. So it could mean that it's not flowing all the time. When it's dotted like this, a dotted blue line means that, that that stream might not be there year round. It could be um, only there during spring, whatever. Uh, a lot of times, uh, depending on the map you have, they could actually tell you that. Um, or it's just, you know, depends on the amount of rain that you've got in an area, how much water is running in that, that, uh, that water coming off, off, of, uh, off of a ridge or, or a mountain. So um, that's really the, you know, the cut and dry of, of the basics of reading a topographic map. I'm going over a lot in a short amount of time. I understand that uh, we're gonna we're gonna continue on with more videos here. We're gonna talk about how to how to use this information to now go in, um, plan your hunt, navigate to your spots, not get lost, and and get around without spooking spooking deer when you're getting in, into your spot and and navigating around using terrain features, using your compass and things like that. So thanks for listening. Just getting started here at the Everyday Bow Hunter. So if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. If you, uh, if you wanna subscribe, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you get uh, notified when we publish new content. I appreciate it and uh, thank you very much.